So this is uh, me and Tim's extra credit number three for statics, which was required building a crane and then solving for the tipping force and the area of the plates underneath, and also solving for a possible counterweight, depending on variable uh, weights. So this is our crane model that we built, which we built out of just wood around the garage, which was a two by four and a smaller piece of wood. And with that, we put a piece of two by four that cut an angles one and screwed the other piece on top and attached these, this piece into the bottom two by four. Then we screwed in four screws underneath as acting as the outrigger legs underneath the crane. And then we attached eyelet hooks or eye hooks and then tied the string along to act as the crane's cable. And so what we did was we were trying to solve originally for the tipping force, what it would take to tip this crane over. So our instruments that we used were mainly actually a milk jug or a distilled water jug and then water itself, like you recommended. So we tied the water jug, actually, I'm sorry. First, we took the crane off, we took our scale, tarred it to zero, put it on, and added uh, note cards underneath until we got it finally level. Once it was leveled, it read a force, and we attached the jug, which we took into account for, and then we filled it slowly with water until it hit zero, and the legs were just barely, almost touching to where you could actually slide a piece of paper underneath. So once we did that, we found our tipping point. With the tipping point found, we then hung, I'm sorry, hung it up in a doorway by a string on one leg and then on the other leg and took our ruler and just used it to make the lines to find our center of gravity, which was here. And after that, we took a tape measure to take more accurate measurements for our crank. So with all these found, we then started the math part. And so for that, we simply drew out a nice little diagram and here are all our measurements converted into centimeters and then we had our weight in grams. So what we were trying to solve for was the tipping weight. But we calculated our crane mass, which was 774 grams. And then once we found that, we converted it to 7.592 newtons. And then we got our tipping mass, which was calculated using the water method described previously to get 185 grams, which we again converted into 1.814 newtons. So now we're dealing with forces, which we plugged into these equations, which Tin here will explain. Okay. Alrighty then. So to find the theoretical weight to tip, we would do the moment at B right here. And so you take the distance from the center of gravity multiply that distance minus the weight times that distance from B. And then you solve it and you get the weight is 1.889 newtons. Okay. So now the percent error, you do the theoretical minus the experimental divided by the theoretical. And we got to around 4% error, which is really good. Now uh, we add a counterweight to it and then we double the, the weight of the tipping force. And so, again, moment at B, and it's the distance from the center of gravity times the, the force of it. Also, the, you minus the, the, the tipping force times the distance. So then that is clockwise. That's why it's negative. The center of gravity is counterclockwise in respect to B. That's why it's positive. And for the counterweight, you take the, the force multiplied by the distance from A to B, which is 22.38 centimeters, and that's uh, counterclockwise as well. That's why it's positive, and then we found out to be 1.45 newtons. And moving on to uh, finding the area of the plate, the reaction at B is just the center of gravity plus the tipping weight, which gets you 9.481 newtons. And then divide by two, obviously, because it's symmetric. You got 4.74 newtons. And then solving for the area, this is the area of the plate that it should be. Okay. Right. And then adding the counterweight into the factor, you just take RB, old RB, 
plus the counterweight force, which is 1.45 newtons, you get 10.932 newtons. Divide by 2, you get 5.466 newtons. And now you do the same thing, equals to 100 kilonewtons to meter square, and then you solve for area, which gets you that number. And that's it.